Old photographs bring cherished memories back to life. But if they aren't stored properly, the passage of time will take a terrible toll. Whether it's fading from too much exposure to light or wear and tear from scratches and bends. But today, breakthrough technologies make it possible to restore even century-old photographs. And your own damaged treasures can be restored to their original glory. On today's show, I'll show you how to take older black and white photos and digitally restore them using some amazing tools and software. What's old becomes new again, right now on The Whole Picture. Welcome to The Whole Picture. I'm Erin Manning. You know, almost everyone has some old black and white photographs stored somewhere, a shoebox or an album. The problem is a lot of these old photographs tend to fade and deteriorate over time. The reason being, maybe they weren't stored properly, or perhaps they were affected by moisture and humidity, or maybe the photo studio just didn't print them correctly in the first place. But the good news is you can catch it in time by using digital technology and restore your old black and white photographs back to their original glory. Now, here's some old black and white photographs that I restored. Take a look at this sailor. Isn't this a great picture? Unfortunately, it has like a bend here and the emulsion's cracking and there are some imperfections at the bottom. Well, I was able to get rid of all of those by digitally restoring it. And now look at the photograph. It's in great shape. This will last a long time. Okay, now here's a picture that definitely is in need of repair. I mean, this is deteriorated and it's probably not gonna be around a lot longer. Another great thing about restoring these pictures is you can zoom in when you scan them and just focus on a few certain people that you wanna show in the photograph. So for instance, I was able to focus in on these three guys and um, restored it so there has no imperfections in it whatsoever. Okay, here's another photograph. Here's a little boy eating cereal. It's a really cute picture. But again, this is bent and it's faded and it can be improved by restoring it. So I did. I scanned it and I was actually able to print it out a little bit larger, which is a really nice thing. Okay, now my student Sherry Agnes was trying to restore one of her old photographs. And this is a really precious old photograph here. And as you can see, it has a line right through the middle of it. It's bent, the emulsion's kind of cracking off. It's definitely damaged. Okay, so she tried to restore it. Here's her restoration. Okay, she blew it up larger, which that's nice. But unfortunately, she made it a little bit worse here when she tried to fix this fold going through the middle of it. She blurred it. And it just isn't as a quality of photograph as I think it could be. But I promised Sherry, by the end of today's lessons, she would be able to successfully restore her own black and white photographs. So the first lesson I'll teach you today is how to scan your images into the computer. Next, I'll explain about levels and why they matter. Then I'll show you a little bit about digital plastic surgery and how to remove all those imperfections in your photograph. And finally, I'll show you how to get the best possible black and white print from your printer. Now, before you do any digital restoration, you need to have the right equipment. That's why I recommend getting the most powerful computer you can afford. Now, you're dealing with really large image files here, so you want to maximize your memory. Go ahead and pick up some extra memory and install it. Things will go a lot faster. Also, you want to get a scanner. Now, just think of these scanners as a high-end copier that just copies your image into your computer and a lot of professionals like to use these graphics tablets. Now these connect right to your computer and with this special pen, you can write on the graphics tablet like this and it appears right on your computer screen. Okay, I have some things to get ready before Sherry gets here, but go ahead and take a look at some other photographs I restored. Up next, I'll teach you the secrets to bringing dying photos back to life. And later, I'll share pro tips on doing your own cloning. It's just what the photo doctor ordered, right here on The Whole Picture. Welcome back to The Whole Picture. Old photographs are not only sentimental mementos, but important records of moments frozen in time. 
You might think your pictures are too far gone to save, but I'm going to teach you how to diagnose, repair, and restore them to health. My student Sherry has joined me in my studio with a handful of old family photographs. Now you've done a good job bringing in a lot of photographs here and these are just great. Um, looks like some are in better shape than others though. <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and pick out a photograph you really like and we'll work on restoring that one. I really like this one. It's a picture of my grandmother where she died last year. We oh, found it in an old okay. family album. Okay. Well it's a great photograph to start with actually because there's not too much wrong with it so you won't get overwhelmed. Okay. Now it looks like it was in a photo album because you see the faded corners here from the old photo corners. Yes. And it looks like there's a watermark in the middle, some scratches up here, and it's just kind of overall yellowed from age. It has. So let's get this into the computer. Okay. So we can start working on it. We need to digitize it. And to digitize it, that means we'll need to scan it. Okay. So let me introduce you to our scanner here. A little intimidating there. Yeah, you know what? Some people think they are, but don't worry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the new scanners are a lot better than the old ones. They're just a lot easier to use. The optics are better, so your pictures will be sharper and clearer. Okay. And it comes with this great software that's very intuitive and will help you automate everything to ensure you get the best scan possible. Perfect. Digitizing a photograph simply means you're turning that photo into a digital image in your computer. Before you get started with the scanner, first make sure the scanner is free of dust and debris. You always want to use an anti-static dusting spray and a soft cloth, not a paper towel, to clean the glass. Think of it as the lens of the scanner. Carefully dust off the picture as well. Now most scanners come with their own software. You can use the home mode or the professional mode. I suggest you use the home mode. This mode gives you more manual options, allowing you more control over the scanning process. Even though we're working on a black and white picture, I recommend you scan the photo in color. This will give you more digital information to work with during the restoration process. Also, scan the image at a high resolution. By doing this, you're capturing the most information in the working file for anything you might want to do later. If you plan to print, 300 dpi is usually sufficient for most family photographs, but for this exercise, we're scanning Sherry's picture at a resolution of 600 dpi so we can maximize the detail. And once you scan the picture, the image will appear on your screen. Now the real fun begins. Before you make any adjustments or changes to the photo, you'll want to save your scanned image as a copy and perform the restoration on this version, keeping your original intact. One thing I recommend doing first is cropping your image. Sometimes your scanned image might include a bit of your scanning bed cover, or the original photo might have a border. Next, examine the overall quality of the photograph. If the image is badly damaged, it may make sense to crop closely to the subject and avoid having to spend a lot of time correcting that background deterioration. Now say you have some old film negatives in a shoebox lying around and you want to digitally restore these pictures too. Most good scanners come with film or slide adapters, allowing you to scan a negative and digitize the image. The adapters are easy to use. They simply pop into the scanner bed cover and the scanning process is the same. Okay, now that we've scanned and digitized and it's in the computer, mm -hmm. I went ahead and opened it up in an image editing software program so we can start to restore it. Okay. Okay, now in this image, I would say we could probably bump up the contrast a little bit. So the first thing we'll do to start restoring the image is adjust the levels. Okay, okay so you'll do that by coming up here to the menu bar and click on enhance roll down to adjust lighting, and then carefully roll over to levels. There you go. This is our levels dialog box, and in it you'll see a black mountain range, right? Well, that's called a histogram, and that represents the range of light values within your image. Now, beneath the histogram are some sliders. If you drag, click and drag on one of them, this one represents the darkest pixels in your image. See how that adjusts the mm -hmm. tonal value? The one in the middle, the slider right in the middle, represents the midtones. So you can adjust that. Mm -hmm. And then the one all the way over to the right represents the lightest pixels in your image. So you can really adjust it, mm -hmm. can't you? Okay, can. you just want to make sure that you do all the levels adjustments before you start retouching. Otherwise, those retouched areas might look a little blotchy. Okay. Levels are a tool in image editing programs that allow you to adjust the brightness and darkness of a photograph. By changing the levels in the histogram, you can adjust the contrast and tonal range of your picture. Adjusting the levels at the beginning of your restoration project is important because often you can't even tell what other problems exist until you get your lights and darks sorted out. 
The first step is to create a duplicate layer and label it as your working copy. Working with the histogram, you need to ask yourself, is there any region in the image that should be completely black or white? By adjusting the levels, you can establish true black and true white as needed. The histogram represents the number of pixels that are of a particular brightness or darkness in your image. After you move the black slider, every pixel to the left of the histogram will now appear black in your image. And by the same token, every pixel to the right of the histogram will appear white. Levels can also be performed on an individual color. Since we scan this photo in color, there are red, blue, and green tones that exist. By dropping down the channel box, you can adjust each color individually. You can also let the image editing software do some of the work for you. If you use the Auto Level tool, the software will make these adjustments automatically. But I always recommend taking as much control of your photograph as possible and adjust the levels yourself. Playing around with the levels gives you more control over the photograph's overall brightness and contrast. Have fun with it. Remember, there are no hard and fast rules. It's subjective, so set the levels as you see fit. If you'd like to learn more about scanning black and white photographs and see a step-by-step -step of this photo restoration, just log on to our website at DIYNetwork.com. Ever wonder what the difference is between a copy, a replica, and a clone? Successful cloning is the key to any great photo restoration, and yes, you can try it at home. I'll share the secret with you next on The Whole Picture. Restoring old or damaged photographs to their original glory is easy thanks to digital technology. Simply scanning the image into your computer gives you the ability to digitally store the image. And by working with the levels, you can adjust the tonal range and contrast in the picture. It's hard to see all the detail in an image that's faded over time, so you need to get your blacks and whites in place. Adjusting the levels allows you to bring brightness and life back to your photograph. So far, Sherry's picture is coming along, but the major reconstruction is about to begin. Welcome back to The Whole Picture. I'm Erin Manning, and I'm teaching Sherry Agnes how to scan and restore her old black and white photographs. Now, Sherry, I bet you're wondering why this monitor is laying on its side. I am. Why is that? Well, it's because it also doubles as a graphics tablet. Cool. Okay, so if you were to grab that special pen over there, you could use mm -hmm. it to actually draw right on the photograph on the screen. Nice. Isn't that great? And you can fit it back to screen just by clicking on that. So it does work like a mouse. You could use a mouse if you wanted to, but using the pen's a little bit faster. Okay, now we'll be retouching this today by using all these tools over here, well not all of them, some of them, okay. in the toolbox. Now some of them are specially made just for retouching, like we'll be using the special clone stamp tool in a couple minutes. Okay, so we'll remove any imperfections in this photograph and thereby retouching it. How exciting. Any restoration project can take time, especially if you're new to the game. Don't get discouraged. Image editing programs today have many tools designed just for this purpose. The cloning tool is really the workhorse of photo restoration. With it, you essentially borrow pixels from one part of the image and paint them onto another. Let's start by working on this faded corner. First, select a source area by holding down the Alt key or Control key on your keyboard and clicking a point on the image that you want to replicate. Then release that Alt key and cover the damaged area just by clicking on it with your mouse. Pay attention to the type of brush you're using while cloning. There are many different sizes of brushes you can select depending on the size of the area you need to repair. Keep in mind, larger brush strokes get the job done quicker, but smaller brushes allow for a more realistic result. The secret to an effective cloning effort is to reselect your source frequently. Think of it literally like a paintbrush. You're constantly going back to your paint bucket and getting more paint. Use your brush to paint over the damaged area and repeat this until you get the desired result. Similar to the clone stamp tool is the spot healing brush. This is a great tool to use when covering small spots and scratches in the image. The same technique applies. Sample an area you want to duplicate, then simply brush over the area you want to cover. Another common problem found in old photographs is dust and scratches, segments of the image that look pixelated. You can repair these by going into the filter menu and click on noise. There you'll find the dust and scratches filter. You can eliminate these imperfections by adjusting the radius and threshold until they magically disappear. 
there is one final touch, sharpening the image. We can't really sharpen an image any more than it already is, but we can create the illusion of sharpness by using a control called Unsharp Mask. When you pull up this menu, you'll see three slider bars, Amount, Radius, and Threshold. Play around with each of these until you get the sharpness you desire. What this tool does is exaggerate the contrast along the edges of the pixels, making them stand out more and appear sharper. With a little work, it is possible to rescue these old photos from doom. Be patient with your restoration efforts. Play around with the many tools and filters and remember, start small. Taking baby steps in a project this big will allow you to have more success in the end. Sherry's picture is now new and improved. We'll show you the dramatic before and after shots coming up next on The Whole Picture. Old photos don't have to be forgotten. By digitally restoring them, you can bring them back to life. So far, we've taken Sherry's photo from a state of disrepair to repair. Adjusting levels will bring the brightness and contrast back where they need to be. And using a technique called cloning can literally erase all signs of aging. Now, will Sherry's old picture truly look brand new? It's time to see her results. Okay, Sherry, this is looking pretty good, but you know what? Let's compare it to the original photograph you brought in. Look at the difference. Oh, I love the faded corners are all gone now. Yeah, they are. And you also got rid of those watermarks mm -hmm. and the dust scratches. My family's gonna be so happy. I bet they will. <laughs> now, and we also got rid of that yellow tone. See how beautiful. great it looks? It's just beautiful. Your family's gonna love this. Now, once we print it out, but let me explain a little bit about these printers and the inks before we do that. Oh, okay. Now, these new inkjet printers come with multiple ink cartridges mm -hmm. that enable you to print some really nice black and white prints. However, to get really professional results, you wanna use these professional inks, and they come in all these different ranges of mm -hmm. gray, okay? And so you'll take eight of these cartridges and replace all eight of those normal cartridges. So when you print out the print, it'll have a really broad range of tones. It'll be really beautiful. Perfect. Using special links for a printing project like this is a great way to ensure your restoration project prints at the highest quality available. Not only do you need a great scanner, computer, and printer, you need good inks. These inks differ in that over time, they fade less than 5% from their original printing. Most other ink cartridges on the market today will fade up to 35% over time. That's not to say you should throw away your old cartridges. These are still good to use for everyday printing, but for a special project like this one, I suggest you go with the special inks. They're easy to load, simply follow the color-coded slots in your printer. After aligning the new cartridges, the newly restored photograph is ready to print. But first, you'll need to adjust some settings for your printer. We originally scanned the photo in color to capture as much information as possible. Now it's time to convert it to grayscale and print it in black and white. You'll be prompted to flatten the image. Because we worked in duplicate layers, we need to merge these layers together and return to a flattened picture. Make sure you save this flattened image under a different name in order to maintain the original layered working file. Also, be sure to resize and save the image as a JPEG to make it more email friendly. When you print, select a high resolution. This will allow you to print the picture in a bigger size if you want later on, like an 8x10 or even 16x20. Finally, determine whether you want to print in portrait or landscape mode, and then it's off to the printer. If you'd like to learn more about restoring black and white photographs or anything you saw here today, just log on to our website at DIYNetwork.com. Okay, Sherry, let's take a look at the final print. If you want to hand that to me, let's admire this a little bit. Okay, first off, I want to point out that it is the same size as your original photograph. Now, we scanned this at 600 dpi, and if we wanted to, we could print it up to 8x10 or even as big as 11 by 14 Perfect gifts for the family. Exactly. Now, just keep practicing on that retouching. It will get easier. Thank you. You're welcome. It's great working with you. You too, Erin. Now, I hope you'll take what you learned today and retouch your own black and white photographs. Join me next time on The Whole Picture. Okay, let's come back up here to image and roll down to select image and let's open up another one. Okay. And work on that.